the children are planning to escape from their welfare center. Suddenly, the mad dog's screaming sound made four weak hearts so scare. A boy told his friend to run away first and he would stay behind to distract the mad dog. Not long after, the sound of hunting dogs tore through the quiet atmosphere. The mad dog stood on the bridge with a flashlight, observing from the side. The boy smeared his face with mud and successfully escaped the hunting dogs. On this side, a group of children are escaping through the forest. Suddenly a boy was caught in a trap. Screams of pain echoed through the mountains and forests time returns to the present. On a stormy night, a girl was heading home when she noticed someone following her. The girl turned around and saw no one behind her. The man in black quickly filled a corner of the wall. In a panic, the girl quickly took out her phone and dialed her father's number, but before he could pick up the phone, someone from behind was chasing her. The girl could no longer think of anything else and turned around and ran away. But after all, she is just a girl. He quickly grabbed the girl's hair and pulled it back. Woke up, she knew she in a damp warehouse. Her dull eyes slowly opened to look around. She still didn't understand why she was brought here. A dark shadow slowly approached her. In this situation, she couldn't react other than stammering for help. But in this desolate place, there was no one to save her. Her body was brought by the perpetrator to the city's cemetery. He is currently at home with his wife preparing a surprise birthday for his daughter. While blowing bubbles, the phone suddenly rang. Manchun's face immediately changed when his daughter told him that he would spend the night out tonight and not come home. Of course, that had never happened in this house, so Manchun was a bit surprised. The father quickly picked up the phone to call his daughter, but she never answered. It's constantly raining outside. Where can she go in the rain like this? Manchun reminded the phone to call the police. Very quickly, early the next morning, the police found the girl's body. Sung Jun looked at the victim's face and was extremely surprised. She has a large gash on her face. That action of the perpetrator made Sung Jun and the others feel extremely confused. Korean police work as fast as Vietnamese police. Only a short time later they found the girl's identity. She is a first-year college student who only turned 20 this spring. Based on the information received, this girl is the victim whose family reported her missing yesterday. This case is in charge of our Sun Jun. Sun Jun went to the forensic examination room to observe the wound left by the perpetrator. It is incised parallel and the incisions are spaced 5 centimeters apart. Through customs analysis, one can see that the perpetrator is a person with extremely skillful knife techniques. Suddenly Sung Jun picked up the knife on the table and pushed the female forensic doctor into the wall. His eyes looked like he wanted to eat her. He is simulating the perpetrator's actions, but his unexpected action made the female forensic doctor think he was crazy. With his extensive experience, after returning from the autopsy room, he quickly determined that the perpetrator's location was in a ruined house. He went to the scene to see if anything was left. But apart from a few broken electric cameras, there was nothing left. After scouting around, he discovered that a camera at the intersection was still working. Sung Jin was waiting his colleague for a camera, he saw a suspect. He jumped over the wall, blocking the opponent's motorbike. Sung Jun pulled out the victim's photo and asked the shipper if he knew this person. The shipper said he had never seen this person before. It seemed like there were no more clues left. Sung Jun suddenly discovered that he had a dash cam attached to his head. Sung Jun went to the cafe to meet the victim's close friend. Her best friend remembered that night the two of them went to the bar to celebrate her birthday. A brazen guy approached her. Because he refused to cooperate, he was hit in the face with something. That guy is still enjoying himself in the bar. He noticed a girl with a cold face. Immediately attracted his attention. She didn't know anything but kept touching her, making the girl extremely uncomfortable. He also gave her a glass of water containing something. Of course she would be crazy to accept his invitation. The matter didn't stop there. He took out a bundle of money and threw it at the girl. I thought that because of that, she would be lenient with him. The girl wasn't short of money, so she pushed him directly to a corner. That action of hers touched his pride. The girl was walking when her hair was pulled back. Sung Jun rushed in to be a hero to save the beauty. It seemed like he would stop when he saw Sung Jun's identity. But with his overbearing nature, that only exists in Sung Jun's imagination. Sung Jun taught him a lesson. The thug was quickly taken to the police station, but he denied that he did not attack this girl. At this time, Sukgu also found his alibi. After hearing that, the young man started bragging again, my father is a rich man, my uncle is also a lawyer at a large law firm, you dare to beat me like this, you're absolutely screwed. Sung Jun felt itchy at his arrogant appearance so he immediately came up to him and said, my father is also a judge, even a supreme court judge. Before leaving, Sung Jun didn't forget to warn him again, even my brother is a judge, you bastard. 
through the device that records the shipper's journey. Sung Jun discovers an extremely suspicious man named Manchun. He worked at the victim's father's factory, so Sung Jun went there alone. There are all kinds of people here, the workers all use knives with practice. Sung Jun revealed his identity and said he wanted to find Manchun. The expressions of the people around him became extremely strange. And Sung Jun also discovered something unusual but he didn't show it. Next, this man immediately called Manchun to inform him. As soon as he hung up the phone, Sung Jun appeared right in front of him. After being questioned by him, he revealed Manchun's address. Sung Jun sneaked into the house alone and searched everywhere, but there was no one in the room. Suddenly Manchun suddenly attacked from behind. After a long time, suspect Manchun was finally overpowered. On the way to be escorted to the police station, they were all seen by a person. And this person is the father of the deceased. Suspect Manchun applied for a jury trial. And the chief judge in charge of the case is Sung Jun's brother. But during the trial, Manchun claimed that he was not the one who killed him. At that time, he actually put a knife into the victim's neck, but that was just to collect the salary her father owed her. At that time, a black car passed by and the girl pushed him out, then fled to the parking lot and climbed into the black car. Manchun remembers clearly that before the car started, he saw the driver's face, which was criminal police officer Sung Jun. As soon as he said, everyone present there was in an uproar. At this moment, Manchun was extremely exhilarated and didn't look like he was lying. The police immediately asked Sung Jun to appear in court as a witness. First, he provided the video recorded by the trip recording device on the shipper's helmet. From here you can clearly see Manchun threatening the girl. On Manchun's knife, blood stains of the dead man were discovered. The fortunate survivor also had her mouth slashed by Manchun. That knife wound was exactly the same as the one on the victim's face. Seeing the scene, everyone at the scene was furious at that steel evidence. But Manchun still did not admit that he was the murderer. Very quickly the jury reached its final verdict. They all unanimously declared Manchun guilty. Hearing this, Manchun was extremely devastated as to why no one believed him. Therefore, he got angry and picked up his pen and stabbed the lawyer next to him. Then he rushed to the judge. At the moment of danger, Sung Jun rushed forward and controlled him. Manchun's eyes were now full of ferocity and indignation. He shouted that you blind jurors should remember this day well. You all will face retribution for your actions today. On the way to be escorted to prison, Manchun quietly opened the piece of paper in his hand. Not long after, a motor approached and an accident occurred. After that, Manchun smoothly escaped from the car. He wants to fulfill the prophecy he made during the trial. The next day, in a deep forest, the police discovered a body again. The killer's tricks are extremely similar to those of Manchun. The defendant is one of the members of the jury. The girls were chatting and laughing in the car. The driver kept looking at them with strange eyes. Suddenly, a motor rushed towards the driver. Luckily the driver was able to quickly break this crazy guy. The driver was angry, speed up to chase after him and scolded the motorbike driver. Even so, his mouth kept mumbling that these two crazy people were looking for a death. The two people in the car immediately felt scared. The driver saw this and immediately changed his previous fierce expression. Explained that it was too dangerous just now. I was just kind enough to remind them. But after he finished speaking, his eyes became extremely strange. The girl whispered to him key. He was still secretly looking at her. But who would have thought that the person he secretly looked back at was the girl talking? Not long after, the police discovered a woman's body in a remote forest. Her mouth had been slashed. There were also many bruises on his body and even his fake nails were removed. And the person who questioned him was the jury member involved in the recent case. Through forensic examination, her state was basically very similar to the previous case. The only difference is that before he was brutally beaten, so Sun Jun immediately thought of Manchun, because after being convicted, he threatened members of the jury, but now after being arrested, he was being treated at the hospital. Sun Jun was angry and came to find him. Argue, the person who harmed Hygiene, but Manchun provided an alibi. Therefore, Sun Jun conducted an investigation of all the people who went out to eat together that night, but they all had the final alibi that Eun Ki and the girl got in a taxi and went home together. But Eun Ki got out of the car in the middle of the road and Sun Jun immediately noticed the driver, because he was the last person who went with the girl. After revealing his identity, Sun Jun began checking the belongings in the driver's car. He took out a black raincoat and asked the driver what this raincoat was. He immediately explained. It's been raining often lately, so I have to bring a raincoat. But his colleague discovered that the trip recording device in the car was nowhere to be found. So he explained that it had been stolen. But it was while closing the trunk that Sung Jun discovered the tattoo on his hand. The driver said that this was the result of his youth. After that, because there was no evidence, Sung Jun just let him go. On this side, 
Sung Hoon is preparing to get things from Sun Jun's car, but when he opened the car door, he accidentally discovered an earring, and it's exactly like the earring of the dead man in the case. After arriving home, he quietly opened the door to Sun Jun's room, he saw that he was slept, but as soon as he closed the door, Sun Jun sat up. His eyes revealed an extremely terrifying look that had never been seen before. Moreover, he still held a pink nail in his hand. Is it really as Manchun said that the murderer is Sun Jun? On this side, the chief lost his beloved daughter and was heartbroken to the point of despair, but he did not expect that at this time he was still receiving messages from his dead daughter. When he clicked to watch it, there was a video recording the entire process of his daughter's fault that the perpetrator had recorded. The daughter was so scared that Jun took seven and kept asking for her life. But the man in black still had no intention of forgiving her. Next, the daughter had a black plastic bag placed on her head. Seeing this, he was in despair without uttering a word. At this time, he did not dare to watch anymore and walked absent-mindedly into the hall. Seeing Sung Jun teaching his nephew how to play handcuffs was a peaceful scene. But until the pendant on Sung Jun's chest showed off, Immediately making him remember what happened 20 years ago. The department head was once the director of a welfare center. That day a pair of sisters were brought there. The older sister's name is Eun Young and the younger name is Eun Jae. At that time, they all wore such a pendant on their chests. In which his sister was assault to death. The chief followed Sun Jun because he felt that the policeman in front of him was Eun Young's younger brother. The chief immediately took out Sun Jun's file to look at. But no records related to his adoption at the orphanage were discovered. Therefore, he immediately arranged for his subordinates to listen to the matter about the necklace. While eating, his colleague looked at Sung Jun's necklace and asked where he bought it. Sung Jun said it was given to him by a girl. As soon as the words were spoken, the colleagues nearby immediately booed. They all thought that Sung Jun had a girlfriend and scolded him for being a traitor. As Sung Jun said, the girl who gave him the necklace passed away many years ago. After the chief heard that, he was extremely shocked and realized that Eun Jae was indeed Sung Jun. So he immediately called Ji Eun's father, Mr. Beck. It seems I have found the culprit. It is Sung Jun. The perpetrator who killed your daughter was Sung Jun. At this time, Manchun asked Sung Jun to go to the rooftop. Waiting for the security guard to leave, he immediately knelt down and asked Sung Jun to help him. At that time, he was instigated by others to be the one to bear the blame for that murder. Because my son is seriously ill and needs money for surgery, they threatened to kill Mr. Kim's son if he dared to betray. But he didn't want to continue like that anymore. However, because he lied many times, Sung Jun did not want to believe him. After Manchun told Sung Jun where the recording was hidden, a devilish smile appeared on his face. At this time, Sung Jun's brother also arrived at the hospital. He wanted to find Manchun to understand the situation, but as soon as he entered the door, Manchun was pushed down by someone. Seeing Manchun's body he couldn't believe it. He immediately ran to the roof but only saw the policeman being knocked unconscious. According to what the police officer said after waking up, when he went to the roof, he saw two people talking to each other. But when he got closer, Sung Jun left. Then, as soon as I turned around, someone knocked me unconscious. But right now everyone can't contact Sung Jun. The police were helpless and could only find Manchun's family members to understand the situation. It was when he got upstairs that he discovered the security door was unlocked. With many years of experience in the profession, he quickly took out his gun and gently pushed the door open. At this time, Sung Jun was holding the knife firmly in the woman's chest. This is an orphanage but it feels like a prison. Children here have to do hard work every day. If work a little late, they will be beaten. Everyone else can only stand by and watch because they are all just children after all. They also thought about running away. But when fleeing because they were unfamiliar with the terrain, someone accidentally died. And there are also people who get hit by a car. As for those who were captured, they could not escape being brutally beaten. Sung Jun and his brother also experienced that. And this orphanage director is Mr. Beak, who just lost his beloved daughter. At this time, Sung Jun prepared to drive away from his colleague's capture, but he didn't go far when he was stopped by a car. Suddenly someone attacked him from behind and knocked him unconscious. Wait until he wakes up again, the director of that year, Mr. Beak was in front of him. Are you awake now? No, let's call NJ. He held the necklace, confirming that he was NJ. Lament that he almost considered his enemy his benefactor. He then immediately took out a knife and prepared to attack. He didn't expect that he was a criminal police officer. Even though both hands were blinded, Sung Jun still escaped and ran out. He risked his life and ran away, finally reaching a cliff. This time that Mr. Beak's group also came. This time you're not shirking catch me because I am very difficult. 
Just like that, Sun Jun jumped down. Mr. Beak was so angry that he immediately ordered his subordinates to go down and search. Although Sun Jun was injured all over his body, he still survived. Her brother endured the pain and went to the phone booth to call in Ki, because after all, he had saved her life. When she heard Sun Jun calling, Eun Ki was extremely shocked because she had just scrolled through the news that Sun Jun was wanted, but she didn't believe he was the murderer, so she drove to the phone booth. But after getting off the car, she was discovered that no one. She was really scared and started looking for Sun Jun. Suddenly her leg, without knowing it, was touched by something. After looking closer, she saw a leg exposed. Eun Ki mustered all his courage and opened the tarp to discover that Sun Jun's body was covered in wounds. Then she helped him into the car at this time a car was rushing towards them from afar. Sung Jun immediately realized the danger and did not send someone to come, it was Mr. Beak who was looking for him. Seeing the bloodstain, he was certain that Sung Jun was nearby. At this time, the car next to him attracted his attention. He immediately searched the car but there was no one in the driver's seat. After the flashlight shined behind Mr. Beak, he saw a person using a black shirt to cover his head. The old man immediately pulled out a knife and pulled hard on the car door. Pulling down the shirt, it turned out to be a girl sleeping soundly. Hoon Ki pretended to be waiting for the driver to arrive and prepare to take out the key and give it to Mr. Beak. So thanks to this top acting, he successfully fooled the old man, and so Sun Jun was saved. After that incident, he told Eun Ki that he had been falsely accused and could only stay here temporarily. Faced with the seal that saved his life, Eun Ki chose to trust him. Sun Jun asked Eun Ki to help deliver the news to his brother, because now only his brother has the ability to help him clean up this injustice. The next day, Eun Ki went to court and intentionally bumped into Sun Jun's brother, then picked up the prepared handkerchief and gave it to him. But after going to the toilet, he saw the piece of paper and, suddenly handed it over to the police officer who was chasing Sun Jun. The police immediately set a trap and even Sun Jun's colleagues had to sigh. Although this is just what I think, that person is definitely not Sun Jun's brother. Sun Jun appeared and walked straight towards his brother. Suddenly, the snake captain threw the phone down, making Sun Jun immediately become alert. Another colleague immediately honked and everyone rushed forward. Sun Jun was aware that his brother sold him out, so his eyes were not filled with despair. He quickly ran away from the scene. While passing through an alley, he met his colleague Suk Gu, but they let him run because they believed that Sun Jun could not be the murderer. After returning home, Eun Ki asked him what happened. Sun Jun is disappointed and says that his brother won't help him, but he sighed and said that it seemed like he was wrong. Sun Jun turned his head to look at his brother slowly walking towards him. Seeing that, he immediately stood up. A girl walked out of the pub. She didn't expect the driver to have noticed her, he drove over. The girl get into the car, not knowing the danger was approaching. Through the mirror, he saw the girl was drunk. He immediately drove to a secluded place. When the girl woke up, she discovered that the surroundings were a bit strange. But at this moment, the driver was nowhere to be seen, making her feel chills. Suddenly the car door opened. Let me out! The man in black immediately pulled her into a small, dark room. Eun Ki received a phone call from this girl. Eun Ki quickly came to save me. When Eun Ki arrived, the police had blocked the scene to conduct an investigation. Next, Eun Ki found the girl in a pile of dry leaves. At this time, her entire body was covered in wounds. Luckily, there is no danger to life. But when the police questioned her, she couldn't remember anything, making the criminal police very helpless. It was when he was preparing to leave that the bastard had a tattoo on his arm. The girl remembered that before she fell into a coma, the killer scratched his arm. So what she remembers most is the tattoo on the perpetrator's arm. Next, she immediately drew the tattoo like a spider. Eun Ki took a picture and gave it to Sun Jun. After looking closely, Sun Jun said he saw this tattoo on Driver Choi's arm. He looked at the girl and discovered that the trick was very similar to that previous case. Sung Jun suspects that the culprit is most likely Driver Choi. But his brother said he wanted to make sure the driver was the killer. Just relying on these photos is not enough, they need to find convincing evidence. This sentence made Sun Jun awake. He suddenly remembered that he had been to hygiene scene. He picked up a broken fake nail and handed it back to forensic medicine for examination. Sun Jun silently came to find the doctor but scared her. As soon as she saw Sun Jun, the forensic medicine immediately regained her expression and scolded him. So long and hasn't even come to visit me. Sung Jun immediately got to the point, asking her if the results of the previous fake nail appraisal were out yet. Forensic medicine said that from the fake nail, it is impossible to determine the identity. This means he is not the culprit. Next, he immediately put the assessment results on the captain's desk. 
but he did not expect that he would be seen by the chief's confidants. After looking around and finding no one he trusted, he handed the report back to the chef and said that the suspect also wanted to interfere in the investigation. After confirming that no one else knew, the police chief instructed him that he could not let a third person know about this and ordered him to continue to arrest Sun Jun. But the chief also felt confused that his daughter had been rejected by someone else. At this time, Driver Choi was preparing to take the soju home when suddenly there was a whistle from behind. He slowly stopped and turned around to look but could no longer hear the sound. The driver didn't pay attention and went straight upstairs, not knowing that there was a person dressed in black standing downstairs. Driver Choi was sitting at home drinking soju. Looking at his expression, it seemed like he was waiting for something. At this time, Sung Jin also came downstairs. As soon as he went upstairs, he discovered that the door was open. As soon as he entered, he saw driver Choi already dead in the pool of blood. Just when Sung Jun was suggestion, the driver's phone suddenly rang. It was in Song Imo, a member of the jury, calling. As for Sung Jun, he didn't say a word. At this time, the police had arrived at the scene. Sung Jun quickly climbed out the window and fled. Upon arriving at Eun-ki's house, he handed the phone to his brother, and there was a mysterious recording in it. And the timing was right before the driver was murdered. As expected, were you? You were the one in court that day. During the trial, I accidentally glanced at you and knew you recognized Mr. Beak. At that time, you called him Crazy Dog. Seeing you staring at Crazy Dog and the scar on your arm, I already knew. It turns out you were number 7 in the welfare center that year. As soon as he finished speaking, the man in black immediately killed him. This recording confirmed that the perpetrator was among the members of the jury. Who the killer is is still a mystery. Furthermore, the biggest suspect, Driver Choi, was also previously ruled out. According to the recording, Sung Jun simulated the suspect's steps and discovered that the suspect was crippled. He immediately thought of the guy wearing glasses. He walked unsteadily. Could he be the culprit? After returning, she said that the guy wearing glasses did not have any scars. So they fell into silence again and suddenly Eun Ki thought of something. At the party after the trial, manager Anz acted extremely strangely. At that time, because of hygiene taking photos, a conflict arose. Their fight attracted Unki's attention. His leg was also crippled on one side and there was also a wound on his arm. Just like that, the guy wearing glasses was eliminated from the list of suspects. After confirming the murderer, Sung Jun immediately stood up and wanted to go arrest him, but was stopped by his brother. Just relying on this recording is not enough to prove Sung Jun's innocence. So his brother prepared to go look for manager and alone. Hoon Ki was extremely worried and chased him out and asked if he needed help. But Sung Hoon said don't worry and don't trust anyone, whether it's Sun Jun or me. Hoon Ki immediately stood still for 5 seconds. Could it be that Sung Hoon is really the murderer that everyone suspects? But not long after his brother left, after Hoon Ki fell asleep, Sung Jun quietly sat up again. In his eyes, that terrifying look of terror once again appeared. The next day, manager and went to the police station and confessed saying that driver Choi was killed by him. But when the police told him that driver Choi had not yet died, he immediately became extremely agitated. Why is that crazy guy still alive? But that driver Choi absolutely cannot be alive. We absolutely cannot let him continue to live. Because driver Choi's life was not in danger, the police immediately released manager in. But he didn't expect that as soon as he walked outside the police station gate, two people followed him. Next, they directly pulled manager in into the car and took him to an abandoned factory. It turns out that Mr. Beak. He also knew that manager in is the seventh child. Mr. Beak grabbed manager in and threatened him to reveal the news about Sun Jun. But manager in laughed out loud because this scene reminded him of 20 years ago. He also did the same to force him to sell out his friends. At that time, he believed him, but in the end, he killed all his friends. And this tormented him all his life. Therefore, he absolutely will not make the mistake and sell out his friend again. So he immediately got angry and told his subordinates to bury him alive. But the next day, a miraculous scene happened. Manager and untied himself and ran away. Surely someone must have saved him, if this person is Sun Jun. Right now, Sun Hoon approached Driver Choi and said that in the recorded segment. He discovered another person and asked who that was. It turned out that not long after Manager and left, Driver Choi woke up. It was at this moment that a person dressed in black appeared before his eyes. Next, that person knocked him unconscious on the spot. Driver Choi said he was number 13. At this moment, Driver Choi saw Sun Jun's face clearly, became extremely scared, and Sun Jun looked at him strangely. And just like that, Driver Choi was intimidated by that look and died. At this time, Mr. Beak went up to prepare to visit Driver Choi when he suddenly bumped into Sun Jun coming down. When he went to the driver's room, he discovered that he had died. So who was the murderer? 
At midnight, a piskik was sitting deep in the forest, chanting incantations non-stop. Suddenly a gust of wind blew and the surrounding candles were immediately extinguished. The psychic immediately became alert. At this time, a group of people arrived, including a boy who risked his life and shouted loudly to the psychic, begging her to save them, but the cowardly piskik chose to stay silent. However, when she looked straight into Unjay's eyes, her whole body suddenly trembled violently. When she stood up again, the medium's face became extremely strange. She pointed straight at Unjay. That child had to be killed. If you let him live, you will die. Everyone will die and must kill that child. Suddenly, Unjay's eyes were filled with a fierce aura. The piskik suddenly jerked awake. Luckily, it was just a dream. She took the bowl of cold water next to her, but as soon as I took a sip from the bowl, it was red water, scared the psychic so much. At this time, Sung Jin also went to manager Han's residence to see if he could find any clues. When he opened the door, there was no one inside, but the bloody invitation on the table caught his attention. When he picked it up to look at it, it was the jury's daughter's wedding invitation. It turns out that today is Mr. Kang's daughter's wedding day. Sung Jun seems to have a premonition that something big is about to happen. The wedding ceremony was very lively. Mr. Kang was very touched because everyone on the jury attended. Just when everyone was eagerly waiting for the wedding, Hoon Ki suddenly saw manager and so she immediately stood up and followed him. But unexpectedly, as soon as he entered the hall, he was nowhere to be seen. Therefore, he immediately told Sun Jun about this. After hearing the news about Sun Jun immediately went to the wedding, next, someone poured something into the wine glass, which turned out to be the wine glass reserved for Mr. Kong and his wife. The waiter brought two glasses of wine straight to Mr. Kong table. He stepped forward to thank everyone and finished his drink. Very quickly, Mr. Kong felt that something was wrong. Everyone in the hall froze in place and stood there staring blankly at him collapsing on the ground. The scene became extremely chaotic. At this time, Sung Jun also ran over and saw Manager An's figure in the crowd. He quickly chased after Manager An but did not expect to see his brother. When he chased him down to the basement, he could no longer see his brother. Waiting until he returned to the hall again, he saw a scene that made other people's hair stand out. Mr. Kang's daughter collapsed in a pool of blood. Her face also had two knife cuts. Meanwhile, Sung Hoon was washing away the bloodstains. Could he be the culprit? This pregnant woman is on her way home. She only felt uncomfortable all over when she looked down and saw that her amniotic fluid had broken. She looked at the public restroom opposite. An idea immediately came to her mind while she was crossing the street when a car was approaching. Luckily, there's nothing dangerous. Manager and currently the biggest suspect in the assassination of Mr. Kong, through surveillance cameras, the police immediately recognized him, so they quickly launched a hunt. Sukku silently informed Sun Jun of this news and he decided to find the manager to confront him. At this time, a car appeared in front of him, it turned out to be Sun Hoon. He came because he wanted to investigate together with Sun Jun and then they contacted Eun Ki. She has discovered an address. Very quickly based on that address they found a woman, and this woman was the pregnant woman who had been rescued by a manager, and that's why he was disabled. After that, he still regularly helped them and gave her a home. Hearing this, Sung Hoon felt that a manager did not seem like a bad person. Sung Jun was watching the boy playing. At this moment, he immediately remembered a few things he had played around with in the past. At that time, he slipped and fell down. Thinking of this, Sung Jun immediately rushed towards the baby and hugged him tightly. The child's mother was so frightened that she ran to push Sung Jun away. At this moment, Sung Jun woke up and quickly stood up to apologize. On the way back Sung Jun didn't say a word. What did you go through in the past? At the same time, Eun Ki contacted the care staff at the orphanage. The employees said that a manager went to a place called Hope Welfare Center. Eun Ki immediately started searching online and recording all the welfare institutes that met the requirements. That night, she told this story to the two Sung Jun brothers. Sung Jun prepared to go there the next day to inquire, but the next morning, when she went to the hospital to pick up Yuna, she received a call from Sukku saying that the captain would come to her house for a surprise checkup. So he quickly went home to wake up Sun Jun who felt in sleep. But unexpectedly, Yuna also followed. She thought that there was something between the two of them, so he started asking questions about everything. She asked her why she hid the murderer in the house and threatened to report to the police. Luckily, Sun Jun arrived in time so this matter could be resolved. Sung Jun had just escaped when the criminal police suddenly came to Eun-Ki house. Captains rushed in directly, luckily she had prepared in advance. The police did not discover Sung Jun. It turned out that the investigation team leader discovered that Sukku often used the phone to contact here. She suddenly explained that it was her phone. Now that she and COU were dating, wasn't it normal for them to be related? 
and thus the captain could be chased away. That night, the department had arranged to meet Mr. Beak to blame him for not handling this matter smoothly, and said that he released manager and precisely to lure Sung Jun. Now that it's good and there are two more lives left, why don't you kill Sung Jun? As Mr. Beak said, this time the agent was Mr. Kong, who was also the delivery person that year of the welfare center, shipped food to the canteen for commission. Could it be that the murderer wanted to attack everyone at the welfare center? On this side, Manager and was hiding under the bridge when he suddenly discovered a man in black appearing before his eyes. He didn't know the danger approaching. That day, Sung Jun had just received a mysterious text message. When he clicked on the link to watch, he saw a video of Manager and being tortured, and behind it there was a timer, with each hour that passed the rope would tighten one more knot. If you want to save people, you must find a specific location. The police discovered that the sender's IP address was at a bar, but when we arrived at the scene, there was no one left. At this time, six hours had passed and the ropes were tightened even more. Manager and was so tormented that he was about to stop breathing, so he could only stand on the chair next to him to gasp for air for a moment. Suddenly, Eun Ki discovered a clue. Sung Jun listened, and it seemed to be the sound of a wall clock. Sung Jun suddenly thought of something. Then he picked up the recording from the driver's phone and opened it again, exactly the same, so the two of them immediately went to the driver's house to drift. After opening the door, Sung Jun ran directly towards Manager and, but then he realized something was wrong, so he stood up to look and it turned out a mannequin. There were only four more hours left, and the ropes were once again tighter. Manager and couldn't sit anymore and could only stand up. He was so scared that he peed all over his pants. Then he looked around in despair and realized that it was very likely that he would have to die here. Therefore, he immediately looked straight into the camera and said the words that he had hidden in his heart for many years. Sung Jun, on this day 20 years ago I sold you out. I secretly told Moon Kong your escape plan. Because at that time I just wanted to escape that hell. Sorry Sung Jun I didn't want that either. As manager and said, the rope began to tighten. If he still didn't save him, he would suffocate to death. On this side, members of the jury are also watching that video. At this moment, the glasses guy's phone rang, but he was worried and hung up. Suddenly what caught everyone's eyes was a series of strange numbers. They zoomed in and looked at these extremely strange numbers. The senior manager seemed to realize something. He turned back to his desk, took out a few videotapes from the drawer. Then he secretly went to the bathroom to watch and burst into tears. At this time, Eun Ki also discovered the welfare center where manager and had lived. Sung Jun knows about it, quickly go there. But when he arrived at the gate of the welfare center and saw that sign, his head immediately felt dizzy. And there's a voice that keeps calling out to you. Don't you really remember this place? At this time, Manager Ed's final time is only 24 minutes. Sung Jun tried to suppress the pain and ran into the welfare center and searched each room. Suddenly, a man in black appeared and stabbed him in the neck. With a needle, causing his vision to immediately become blurry. Seeing that the man in black was about to run away, he weakly followed. He doesn't give up on catching that guy. Stop for me. Who is that person in black? But he slowly walked away. But the heels of his shoes attracted Sung Jun's attention, because this is the biggest clue about the main suspect. At this moment, Sung Jun was awakened by a loud scream. Following that scream, he found his brother rescuing Manager and the two of them joined forces to let Manager in down only to discover that he had stopped breathing, so another person died tragically. Sung Jun was completely agitated so he immediately turned around to look for the culprit, but he didn't expect to encounter Mr. Beak, and both sides did not say a word and directly declared war. After a while, the two brothers were caught again. Mr. Beak used an iron chain directly control Sung Jun. He also wanted to let Sung Jun experience the pain of witnessing the loss of a loved one with his own eyes. Seeing that his brother was in danger, he suddenly jumped out and drove the car into Mr. Beak. At this time, the police also arrived at the scene and quickly surrounded everyone. In the interrogation room, Sung Jun kept recalling the appearance of the man in black. Feel that the person is both calm and confident, and his thick soul was still visible. While he was deep in thought, police officer Kong entered. Sung Jun quickly took care of his brother's wound and team leader Khan kept laughing at him for being such a good younger brother, and told him to think carefully about why they knew his location. Here, the head distracted the management staff and then went to see Mr. Beak, question him why the plan to kill Sun Jun failed. But unexpectedly, Mr. Beak grabbed the chief's collar and threatened him to let him go, otherwise, it will drag you along with you. After being threatened, the station chief immediately went to Captain Kong and told him to find an opportunity to eliminate Mr. Beak. After hearing that, he froze on the spot and said that he could kill someone, but the department head laughed and said this isn't the first time you've done that. 
So, it turns out the scene of Man Chun's wife incident was staged by Kong. But Man Chun's son was there. So, he killed him. Facing the threat. Captain Kong had no choice but to compromise and take Mr. Beak to the bathroom. When he saw that there was no one around, he immediately took off the man's handcuffs. But as soon as he opened the handcuffs, Mr. Beak immediately grabbed Captain Kang's head and smashed it directly into the coconut tub. Such a strong impact caused Captain Kong to quickly die. Then Mr. Beak went to the interrogation room where Sun Jun was. Then he took advantage of his defenselessness and attacked. Sun Jun struggled to breathe. After a while, he lay still. Sun Hoon handed over the flycam video footage to the police. Through the video, the police saw that the person who pushed Manchun down was Mr. Beak. Then he went to Manchun's house to harm his wife. So everyone immediately realized that Sung Jun was in danger, but when they got to the interrogation room, they saw Sung Jun trying to deal with him, so they stopped him. As soon as the department head came in, he discovered that his big deal had gone wrong. It seems that the truth cannot be hidden anymore. The next day, the police station held a press conference to reveal it to the public. The perpetrator in the Manchun family murder case. That's how Sung Jun's doubts were removed. At the funeral, there were only a few people left now. The senior manager said that the culprit had been caught and could finally rest easy and sleep well, but the psychic told him to still watch a little more news. Next, the guy wearing glasses immediately handed him the phone. Sung Jun was clear of the crime that the perpetrator in the case was someone else, so his face immediately changed color. Everyone's expressions became serious because everyone was afraid the killer. Sung Jun then continued to return to work and searched Mr. Beak's house but he did not expect to discover his wife's body in the fridge at his house. He also discovered that Mr. Beak frequently contacted someone. So he tried calling that number again. Hello, isn't this the voice of the department head? Sung Jun immediately told the captain about this. Mr. Beak is closely related to the department head seems like they are hiding something. To investigate clearly, the two decided to act out a drama. That night, the chief looked at the pictures of the corpse's bonds in his hand. Suddenly, a man's screams were heard from outside. So the head of the department took the gold and put the photos away. Next, the captain rushed in with a broken vehicle. While still scolding in his mouth, the chief let out all the angry words in his heart. Then the chief came to teach him a lesson. Sung Jun took the chief's phone. After a moment of hesitation, he put the phone in his pocket and pulled the captain out. After returning to the office, they immediately turned on their phones to investigate. Above is all the history of calling Mr. Beak. From here we can see that this relationship is definitely not simple. Sung Jun opened the message again and it was the video of the chief's daughter being murdered. Inside recorded the entire process of her being killed. After watching the cruel tricks of the murderer, Sung Jun felt nauseous. He didn't expect that the murderer could be so cruel. The next day, Sung Hoon went out jogging as usual. His shoelace came loose. Just as he was tightening the laces, the familiar thick soul appeared. And this is exactly the same as the thick soul of the murderer who harmed a manager. After returning home, Sung Jun was happily carving wooden people. His skillful way of using communication seems to be teasing the woman. One by one, take out the wooden people and place them on the overlapping hands and connect the hearts together, like the brothers and sisters in the orphanage back then. At that time, in order to escape from the welfare center, they kept their faith and stood side by side. Thinking about his previous hellish life, Sung Hoon couldn't hold back his tears, but then his eyes became fierce again. This boy's name is Inje because since childhood he was treated extremely cruelly. When he grows up, he wants to deal with all the people who bullied him, just when everyone thought that the murderer was Inje. Unki discovered that Inje had died 20 years ago. If Unje is dead, then who is the person who is still carrying out that revenge plan? At this time, Sung Hoon was placing photos of the remaining five members of the jury on the table and scratching his head thoughtfully. Next, he took out another photo and this person was Unki. But why did you take Unki's photo? On this side, Sung Jun and others were studying the video of the chief's daughter and discovered that it was exactly the same as the place where a manager was murdered. Sung Jun guessed at the past, chief must have had some secret that he couldn't tell others. That's why he hid the video of his murdered daughter and then secretly joined hands with Mr. Beak to solve the culprit. Therefore, the criminal must have been a child in the blind orphanage 20 years ago. And the five members of the jury are definitely all related to the welfare center. So next, the victim is definitely one of them. Therefore, Sung Jun immediately went to the chef first and found out that his older brother had passed away when he was young. He said that his brother went missing and could not be found, so he registered his death. After that, Sung Jun immediately contacted his parents. They said they had gone to the welfare center to search, but couldn't find their child anywhere, so just asking the director there for help. 
and that director is the current head of the department. On this side, my colleague also investigated 20 years ago. Senior managers also came to interview that welfare center, but he didn't know why he was working in the middle. He suddenly stopped. After that, Sun Jin called the Piskik. Welfare Hope Center? I don't know. Where you said the welfare center is? She remembers one night 20 years ago. Several men tied up a group of children, including a boy who risked help. After thinking carefully, she remembered that there was a child wearing outfit number 13. She spoke in a frightened tone upon seeing the child's gaze. Because your body is full of murderous. After that, the Piskik suddenly got startled. If you let him live, you have to die and we all have to die. After returning to Sun Jun police station, he found some clues. Right now there are three people related to the welfare center. As for Eun Ki and the guy wearing glasses, there are no clues yet. At this time, the guy wearing glasses suddenly came, said that he was adopted and had been in a car accident, so he can't remember many things clearly. After a while, Sung Jun invited him to the fast food restaurant he often went to. Just after ordering, he received a phone call from Eun Ki. She stared intently at the bespectacled boy. It's like seeing a relative. On this side, Eun Ki learned that Eun Jae died 20 years ago. So she immediately took Sun Jun to the cemetery to confirm. As soon as he arrived in front of the grave, he started to feel the most pain. Next, a number of fragmented memories gradually appeared. But in these memories, it seems like Sung Jun is constantly calling him. Don't be like that. Sung Jun still doesn't know he was adopted. He can't even remember who he is. So how can he remember this? Sung Jun is extremely worried about his identity. So he drank one glass after another and quickly collapsed at the table. Goon Ki called Sung Hoon to take him home. But as soon as he lay down on the bed, he started talking in his sleep about who he was. You told me you called me Yoon Jae. Sun Hoon went to the bathroom, cut a line on his hand. On this side, the sound suddenly rang out, breaking the quiet night. The girl was curious and went out to check the situation. At this moment, there was a guy in a black shirt slowly walking towards her. She carefully hid in the corner and looked around. Suddenly, an arm grabbed her from behind and her mouth was tightly covered. As for the guy in black, he revealed a strange smile. The criminal investigation department has yet to uncover any clues about the culprit. They watched the video of the case again and finally found the loophole. A guy wearing a black hat once passed through the dead man's room. He is the prime suspect. Right now Sun Hoon is wearing that familiar outfit. And when he arrived at an alley through GPS, it turned out that he had been following Yoon Ki. But he didn't expect that this mysterious act of his would be noticed by Yuna. Yuna asked Sun Jun if he liked Yoon Ki. Sun Hoon denies it. She said so herself. Yoon Ki is the only person who is kind to her, so, she absolutely will not allow anyone to harm her. That night Sun Jun went to Mr. Beak and told him that Yoon Jae had died 20 years ago. Then he immediately gave him Yoon Jae's death certificate. Seeing that, Mr. Beak immediately frowned. Wondering if he had misunderstood Sun Jun the whole time, suddenly Sun Jun stood up and approached him. If it wasn't Eun Jae, then who was the one who harmed his daughter? Tell me about the person who is jealous of you. I will definitely make him suffer punishment. Mr. Beak didn't say a word, but in his heart he already had his own plan. He contacted his subordinates and told him to immediately investigate this matter. Very quickly, the subordinates went to a welfare center and found Eun Ki's mother. Her mother said that that year Eun Jae was transferred so she did not know the specific situation. Waiting for him to leave, Sung Jun appeared in front of her again. I want to know about the Hope Welfare Center. Eun Ki's mother hesitated and didn't want to say anything like she was afraid of something. Sung Jun said that the killer is now reporting on all the members of the jury. Eun Ki could very well be the next victim. At this time, the woman described that year there was a boy number 11 who was older than Eun Jae. Both grew up in an orphanage. Over here, Eun Ki is looking for information about the welfare center. From her friends at the welfare center that year, she found photos of five children. At this time, a man in black appeared downstairs. He stopped humming a song and then slowly walked towards Eun Ki's house. And because she was curious, she boldly went out to check. By the time Sun Jun arrived at Eun Ki's house, she was nowhere to be seen. Accidentally the photo on the computer attracted his attention, and there was a boy he seemed to know. Sun Jun's head felt a sharp pain again. Isn't this the same person in the photo? He seems to understand something, but he did not believe that his brother was the murderer. He immediately returned to his brother's house, but when he opened the door, he was nowhere to be found. When he saw the five wooden figures on the table Sun Jun completely froze. He conveniently held a mannequin with the number 11 engraved on its back. In fact, 
His brother is the person who has the best relationship with Eun Jae. He always helps Eun Jae take revenge. During the night, some people discovered a woman's bloodied body in a ruined house. Holding his knees with both hands, he sat huddled in the safe. Eun Ki couldn't believe it when he saw Yuna's body before his eyes. And now she couldn't hold back her tears anymore. Just an hour ago Sun Jun discovered that his brother was Eun Jae's best friend and was also number 11 that year. Sun Jun opened the drawer and discovered many photos in it. And the people on these photos are the remaining members of the jury. Sung Jun did not want to believe that his brother was the murderer, so he took out his phone and called his brother to confirm. But unexpectedly, no one picked up on the other end of the line. Realizing that something bad had happened, he immediately contacted Suk Gu. Tell him to help me investigate my brother's current location. At this time, Suk Gu is investigating at the child welfare center scene. They discovered blood stains there and the surveillance camera was also intentionally sabotaged by someone, so the captain guessed that the perpetrator went straight to Eun Ki. After that, they immediately investigated the cameras around. Sung Jun recognized his brother's car. After seeing him drive to a wild place, he immediately disappeared from surveillance range. So Sung Jun immediately followed that route and discovered his brother's car at a private villa. After getting out of the car, he discovered that his brother was constantly burying dirt in the hole, as if trying to cover up something. Thinking about Eun Ki being missing, Sung Jun quickly arrived. Where is Eun Ki? I ask you. Where Eun Jae is? Are you afraid I'll kidnap Eun Ki and drag her down here? Sung Jun pushed his brother away and frantically dug the soil out of the hole. And right now, someone standing not far away is Eun Ki. Only then did Sung Jun breathe a sigh of relief. It turns out that when Eun Ki heard the sound of blood flute and went out to check, it was Sung Hoon who pulled her back because the killer's target this time was her. That's how he saved Eun Ki's life. Sung Jun asked Eun Ki why she didn't call the police, but Sung Hoon said he stopped her because he didn't trust the police. So who are you and why are you hiding so many things? So what do you want to say? The number 11 is you? Sung Hoon explained that it was a dark memory that he could not erase for the rest of his life. If you say it yourself, everyone will doubt you. Even though he is number 11, he is not really the culprit. Just as he was about to leave, the phone in his pocket rang. Someone sent him a photo of him and Yuna. He realized that the killer's target was not Eun Ki but Yuna. Yuna was in danger. Eun Ki suddenly thought about leaving Yuna in the wooden room alone, so they immediately went back. When they arrived, Yuna was already dead in the closet. After that incident, because of suspicion, Sung Hoon had to take over the investigation. The station chief had never met him, so he immediately asked the captain who this person was. The captain immediately said he was Sung Jun's brother. The chief looked at Sung Jun and was so scared. He immediately went to Mr. Beak and said that the other couple did not adopt Sung Jun but Sung Hoon. Then the chief immediately told Mr. Beak to eliminate Sung Hoon, because he was afraid that he would reveal his previous secret, laughing and said, Now that I'm a prisoner, if I want to get rid of it, the chief has to do it personally. The chief saw that he could not give orders to him, so he immediately played a psychological game. Don't you want to revenge your daughter? You must know that now the only person who can help you out is me. After speaking, he proudly left the cell. After the chief left, Mr. Beak started going crazy and banged his head on the door. The police saw this and rushed to barricade him. The girl was locked in a closet and her whole body was covered in wounds. After drawing her blood and writing down her final denial, she eventually died from excessive blood loss. This is already the fourth girl in a series of recent cases. The forensic medicine told Sun Jun that the tools used in the crime were identical to those of the previous three girls. It's very clear this is the same person, but before that, the most suspected brother was eliminated from the list of suspects. So who is the murderer? Sung Jun recalled that when he interrogated his brother, he once mentioned the number 12. So is number 12 the real killer? Next, Sung Jun immediately told Suk Gu to bring Yuna's phone test results. They discovered that Yuna and Sung Hoon's relationship seemed to be very intimate. And on the last document page, Sung Jun found a new clue. Sung Hoon once went to Driver Choi's house. Then look at the record date, May 15th, which is the day manager An's incident happened. Sung Jun remembered that time when he wanted to go to Driver Choi's house to find manager An. His brother stopped him and told him not to waste time. It was very clear that at that time the brother knew that manager An was not there. But why do I never see him mention that he once went to Driver Choi's house? Surely there is something suspicious in this matter. Sung Jun once again doubted his brother. He took Sung Hoon's photo and asked the owner of the Photoshop if this person had ever been here. The boss said he came to get the video from that day. Furthermore, he took out his phone to show Sung Jun the hot air balloon video of that day's event, but he clearly remembered what his brother said the day Man Chun fell from the house. I was in front of the hospital and saw a drone flying overhead. A series of clues have shown that Sung Hoon is not simple. He already knew who the murderer of Man Chun was, 
But why did he have to hide that evidence and then pretend like he didn't know anything, while he was deep in thought, Unki called. It turns out that Unki learned from his mother that a senior manager might have a video about the Hope Welfare Center, and she told this clue to Sun Jun. Right when Sun Jun came to inquire and conduct an investigation, a familiar shadow appeared again on the surveillance camera. Sung Jun just looked and realized that his brother looked like it was time to find evidence. While his brother wasn't home, Sung Jun went to search everywhere. Even in the dressing room, but still couldn't find that black hat. At that moment, the door opened and Sung Hun walked in. Are you looking for something? No. Just when his brother was about to go into the room, Sung Jun called again. He asked again what day he went looking for the drone. But Sung Hun said it was not a drone, but a hot air balloon. So Sung Jun became even more suspicious, it seemed like he had remembered wrongly at first. But what day did you go looking for that hot air balloon? Sung Hun immediately replied that he just got married not long ago. Sung Jun quietly went to the garage again. When he opened the trunk of his brother's car, he sure enough found that black hat. And in the bag there was also a pair of shoes. At this moment, Sung Jun was so worried that he couldn't breathe so he carefully turned the shoe over to look at it. The shoe prints were both interesting and exactly the same as those of the guy in black, the real killer was Sun Hoon. When Sung Jun returned home, he wanted to find his brother to ask questions, but it's strange to hear that he's gone out. So he immediately drove after Sun Hoon. And he also seemed to discover that Sung Jun was following him. He drove to the suburbs and got off in the deepest part of the forest. Just when Sung Jun thought he was about to reveal his brother's identity, a man dressed in black slowly walked towards his brother. Before Sung Jun could react, the man in black pulled out a knife and stabbed Sung Hoon. Then the man in black disappeared into the night. Sung Jun hurriedly ran towards his brother. After that, he stood by the sick forest and thought for a long time. He didn't understand why his brother went to meet that guy in black in the middle of the night. Look at me, Hoon Jae. No. Sung Jun suddenly woke up from a dream that was so real that he woke up. It turns out that his brother has always used his own methods to find the culprit. Looks like I blamed my brother wrongly before. The next day, Sung Jun returned to the scene where his brother was attacked. Blood stains on the ground. After carefully searching, he discovered a camera over one meter high. In the grass not far away, with images of the perpetrator on both sides, Sung Jun was extremely certain that this person was the person in black who he saw in the hallway of the welfare center the day manager and was murdered. Of the five children who initially escaped from the orphanage, only number 12 and number 24 are currently unknown. Sung Jun immediately thought of Mr. Beak. Just when he was about to go look for him, he realized that Mr. Beak was no longer in the cell. He was locked up in a mental hospital by the chief on the grounds that he was crazy. Although this old man looks crazy from the outside, with his acumen Sun Jun knows clearly. This is definitely a fake show created by him and the department head. So Sun Jun decided to find the department head and ask for clarity. He asked the chief why he sent Mr. Beak to the mental hospital, but the chief asked, where would a crazy person be taken if not sent to a mental hospital? He can't bear it anymore. The Hope Welfare Center at that time was owned by you, right? What did he do with those children at that time? If you want to know that, go find your mother now that she is a minister. Just as she was on her way back to the office, someone came to block her way. The woman said her child went crazy after leaving the Hope Welfare Center. Although the mother stood still for a few seconds, she still pretended to tell the woman to leave first and she would handle it. But after returning to work, she told her subordinates to forbid this woman. And this entire scene was seen by Sun Jun who just arrived. When he saw the words Hope Welfare Center above the sign, Sun Jun immediately called her over. After revealing her police identity, she immediately took him home and told him that, at first, because she heard that the welfare center was about to close, she went there to pick up her son. After returning home, her son was still like that. She even said she couldn't call her son's name, because just calling your name makes you lose control, so I have to call you number 45. Sung Jin tried to talk to his son but unexpectedly scared him so much that he kept backing away. After that, Sung Jin could only ask Eun Ki for help and ask her to think of a way to approach him. The next day, Eun Ki went to that woman's house and saw her son writing numbers on paper, and after a while, the two gradually became good friends. At the same time, Eun Ki gradually learned the name of number 24. This guy keeps standing by the missing person's board. When the restaurant owner asked him what he was standing there for, In Song said he was going to come eat but didn't know the restaurant was closed today. It was when he left that the owner enthusiastically told him to come into the restaurant and then prepared a sumptuous table for him. When the two were talking about the child on the missing notice board, the lady said it was the son she had been searching for for 20 years. 
At this time, Insung also confessed that he was the child who disappeared 20 years ago. In addition, he also said that the day he lost his mother was also the last time he saw her. The mother held Insung's hand tightly and cried without a sound, but the two did not know that this scene was seen by someone outside the door, to thank the police for helping her search for her son for a long time. The landlady specially invited everyone to her house for a meal. At this time, the department head called her into his office, but this scene was noticed by Sung Jun that night at the party. In Sung unfortunately wet his pants while his mother helped him wipe the water. Sung Jun suddenly discovered that there was a scar on his ankle. When number 12 ran away, his leg was caught in a trap and he was seriously injured. Therefore, Sung Jun constantly suspected that In Sung was number 12. Very quickly, the forensic department had new clues through testing the murder weapon on his brother. He discovers that the murder weapon is a knife, which can only be made by one of the two top craftsmen in the country. And based on the shape of the fragments, we can guess that it is an extremely sharp sashimi knife. Sung Jun immediately remembered a place and hurriedly found Yung Su. Just when he was trying to understand the situation, Eun Ki called again, I already know the name of number 24. The name of number 24 is Hyun Su. As soon as heard his brother's name, he secretly pushed the knife handle on the cabinet inside. However, how could this small action of his go unnoticed by Sung Jun? Sung Jun went directly inside and took that thing out. When he opened the wrapping paper, inside was a knife covered in blood. Yoon Su was then taken to the station and faced with questions from Sung Jun. Yoon Su answered all questions without any hesitation. He said that that night he stabbed Sung Hoon, but from Yoon Su's avoiding eyes. Sung Jun saw the clue and understood very clearly that he was not the real killer. Following the clue of the murder weapon, Sung Jun went to a blacksmith shop. He asked the boss if he had ever seen the knife in this photo. The boss said that this knife was indeed made by him. This made Sung Jun happy like a flag in his stomach. Do you still remember who bought it? But he remembered that he had a habit of keeping a registration book and said that each knife had its own number. Based on the serial number, he quickly found the person who bought this knife at that time. The name of the person who bought this knife is Eun Jae. He is a young man, said he wanted to buy a gift for his younger brother. And the younger brother seems to be running a Japanese restaurant. Could it be that the person who always impersonates Eun Jae is Yun Su's older brother Hyun Su? At this time, Behind the mountain, the police discovered countless skeletons of children, and the surprising thing is that the number 24 is also in there. According to the clues in hand, Sung Jun eliminates people whose identities he already knows. When writing number 13 in J, he seemed to think of something. The other words on the murder weapon's name on the blackboard and the last confession that Yuna left behind before he died. It seems they are all the same words. Could it be that what Yuna left behind was a person's name? So he immediately showed that denial to Eun Ki and asked her if she had ever seen this name? But because she was so heartbroken by Yuna's departure, she eventually returned to her room first, without discovering any important clues. After drying her tears, Eun Ki tried to calm down. The scene of that day immediately appeared in her mind. Who is he? A kind young man, so the clue that Yuna left behind is that person. Eun Ki immediately told Sun Jun about this. As for Sun Jun, he also saw the original photo of Insung in the adoption file, which was identical to the photo of Eun Jae on his cell phone. Insung is Eun Jae? Right now there is a figure slowly approaching Sun Hoon's sick forest. The night he was assassinated, Eun Jae's face could be clearly seen under his black clothes. Sun Hoon was scared and opened his eyes. Are you still alive? And one morning in a cold car, this boy was happily eating ice cream, when his mother showed him a sad face and gave him instructions. Mom, I'm going to go to the bathroom for a while, but absolutely don't run around. Yes, I do. The mother could not bear to leave but hugged the boy tightly. Then he coldly left there and quickly boarded a bus. It turned out that she wanted to abandon her child. But when she reached the next stop, the woman regretted it and turned around and ran back to the park, but could not see the boy. At this time, she was extremely regretful, but it was too late and the boy was taken to the welfare center. Every day he was forced to do hard work. If he didn't work hard, he would be lectured by the warden, the boy could only hide in a corner and cry quietly. Hoon Jae deeply sympathized with this new boy. What are you doing here? I miss my mom. Why you're here? Are you like the other abandoned friends? Didn't my mother say she wanted to go to the bathroom? But she didn't come back? The boy looked down in disappointment. At this time Hoon Jae said do you want me to help you deal with her? After hearing this, the boy looked up in surprise. Not long after he was on the run, his leg was caught in a trap. Because he was not treated, he later passed away and his mother was still happily cooking breakfast, not knowing that this boy in front of him was actually the devil who killed Eun Jae. 
Hoon Jae conveniently took out a peach and took a bite when the owner quickly ate it again, because she knew her son would be allergic to peaches. But Eun Jae smiled coldly and said that her favorite thing to eat is peaches. The owner immediately froze on the spot. Only then did she realize that this person in front of her was not her son. But she didn't say anything. Just said that she was old so she might have remembered wrongly. On this side, after finding out that Insung was Eun Jae, Sung Joon immediately went to his brother and asked him if he could see the murderer's face clearly. Sung Joon said Eun Jae. So Sung Joon immediately informed his colleagues to arrest him. Sukgu quickly went to the company and discovered that the identity information Eun Jae used belonged to someone else. Sung Joon sensed that the landlady might be in danger so he went straight to her house, but only saw the phone left on the table. At this time, Mr. B was locked in the oil barrel and kept shaking the barrel violently, eventually knocking it over. Thinking that she could escape, Eun Jae walked out of the car. Mr. B kept begging him to forgive him, but he said I won't kill you for now then pushed him back into the box. Yung Su slowly came to see everything with his own eyes. Could it be that he was also the murderer? On this side, the director had just returned to his office when the phone on the desk rang. When he opened it, he saw images of himself bullying Eun Jae in the past. The department head immediately felt confused, then dialed the number again and discovered that person was Mr. Bae. So he immediately went to Mr. Beak and told him about this. Furthermore, it was said that this was very likely what Eun Jae had instructed him to do. Therefore, the two decided to take this opportunity to eliminate Eun Jae. The next day, Sung Joon discovered a body inside an iron barrel. This is the gift that Eun Jae gave him. An hour ago a text message broke the morning's quiet. The content on it was the news that Eun Ki's mother had been kidnapped. Eun Ki was extremely frightened and called that number again, and the person who answered the phone was Eun Jae. She warned Eun Jae not to harm her mother. Otherwise, she would come and settle accounts with him, including Yuna's case. But Eun Jae said that her grandmother's safety was in her hands, and told her to go outside in a moment and a taxi would come to pick her up. But just as he was about to send a signal for help to Sun Jun, Eun Jae warned him not to call the police, so she just obediently ran out. At this time, there was a taxi on the side of the road. She went closer to see if it was Young Su. Are they partners? At the same time, Sun Hoon learned that his mother had disappeared. Before leaving, he also brought a large amount of money. Next, the chief of police department, the restaurant owner, and Mr. Bae also played the missing game. Sung Joon immediately thought of Eun Jae. He suspected he gathered them together and hid them somewhere. After returning home, Sung Joon noticed the numbers 24. All marked. But he himself clearly remembered that there had been no such special marking before. After reviewing it several times, he finally remembered. This is where Eun Jae was detained. But when they arrived at the gate of the villa, they discovered that the place was full of bombs. Sung Joon feels very strange if there are many people locked up here, so why wasn't there any movement, but he didn't dare to act rashly. Because once this door is opened, the whole mansion will explode. At this time, Eun Jae called to say that she had prepared a gift for him, and told him to go open the oil tank next to him and take a look. And Eun Jae is watching their every move from afar. And from the recent conversation with Eun Jae, it seems that Sung Joon has found some new clues. When he opens the door, the house will explode at the same time. It turns out all the missing people and Eun Jae aren't here at all. It's just that he's deliberately stalling for time. So the only place he can go around here is the orphanage. By this time, the department head at the welfare center had regained consciousness. He looked around and discovered that several missing people related to the welfare center were all here. He remembered that at that time he and Mr. Beak were negotiating what to do with Eun Jae. Therefore, he brought the money alone, so that after Eun Jae handed over the evidence, he would wait for Mr. Beak to come and kill him together. But he waited forever and still not see him. Eun Jae played a familiar song and slowly approached, making the chief so scared that he kept backing away. But no matter how fast he ran, he couldn't be as fast as Eun Jae's tranquilizer arrow. Just like that, the chief fainted on the spot, thinking that Mr. Beak had betrayed him, so when saw him, he immediately went up. He grabbed Mr. Beak's collar and was about to kick him, but he pushed him away directly. On the way here, he saw Eun Jae in black clothes. Eun Jae deliberately challenged him to run deep into the jungle, and that's why Mr. Beak was trapped in his leg just like that, and he was also brought here. At this time, everyone had woken up, then the bomb at the door attracted their attention. Just when everyone was extremely panicked, there was a voice coming from the room surveillance camera. Next, the real trial officially begins. Hoon Jae told them through the loudspeaker to just spend the allotted time. If you choose the first qualified person, I will spare the others. Otherwise they would all die. After speaking, he immediately adjusted the time for the bomb to explode to 10 minutes. Mr. Beak immediately burst out laughing because he was very good at this. He picked up the chair and threw it at everyone. 
Hoon Ki tried to advise everyone to calm down, but if they can't choose a person to bear the burden, they basically won't be able to get out of here. They had to choose one person. At this time, the restaurant owner immediately took the initiative to stand up. She asked Eun Jae to spare the others and volunteered to bear the pain for them, but a new problem has come up. Who will be the next one? Mr. Beak stood up and was about to attack, but Eun Ki blocked her in front of her. Seeing that four minutes has passed, if don't take action, the life will be over. Therefore, the chief immediately urged everyone to act quickly and said that he wanted to pull Unki out, but she said that if you want to confess, the guilty person must confess first. The psychic immediately pointed out that Mr. Bitch had initially dragged those children away. He said, at first the psychic not only did not save the children, but also shouted that Unji Jae had to be dealt with. Mr. Bay, on the other hand, was bribed. And the person who bought it was Sung Jun's mother. Unki's mother didn't treat the child properly, so the baby died early. All of the people here are accomplices and the chief of staff is the one with the heaviest crime for defrauding a huge amount of insurance money. He took all the lost children to an orphanage and imprisoned them. Furthermore, they lied to their parents that they couldn't find anyone. As soon as the restaurant owner heard it, she was extremely desperate and blamed herself for trusting him too much at first. After losing her child, she immediately called the police. But who would have thought that he would be taken to the welfare center by the department head? At this time, the woman extremely blamed herself for abandoning her child. You are evil, you scoundrel. I filmed all the scenes of you sneaking into that girl's room in the villa. Unki's mother also specifically blamed the director as the one who harmed Eun Jae. Therefore, everyone unanimously decided to let him die. In order to save his life, the chief pointed out that Mr. Beak had lost 24 people's lives. He hung all the children on steel bars and beat them until they could barely breathe. After hearing this, he loudly scolded him for not being worthy of being a human being, even the children but don't let go. And it was this sentence that made him completely crazy. Just when he grabbed her and wanted to attack her, her mother stood up to block her. It's your daughter. Mr. Beak immediately froze. Then the woman immediately told the secret that she had kept hidden for 20 years. It turned out Unki's father is Mr. Beak. Now she knows everything. Even in more than 20 years, she has never seen a photo of her father. At this time, Sung Jun walked along the cave entrance to find the bomb with only 43 seconds left. If you can't find someone die, I will kill all of you. He took out the remote control and prepared to go to hell together. Bye bye. Everyone immediately hugged each other tightly. When Sung Jun stood there staring at the bomb, Eun Jae discovered something was wrong. No matter how he pressed the remote control, the bomb did not explode. So he returned to the basement, and at this moment a black shadow came out from the darkness. He looked closely and saw that it was the brother he loved the most. At the same time, a gun was pointed straight at his head. So the serial falling case that shocked the whole of Korea has now caught the culprit. But is everything really that simple? Back to the scene just now when Sung Jun shot the gun at his head. He turned to look at Sung Hoon with an expression of disbelief as to what this was all about. Next, Eun Jae was pushed against the wall. His face was extremely angry. What is this? Why don't you say anything? Why don't you say something? It seems things are not that simple. From Eun Jae's eyes, one can even see betrayal. Very quickly, an investigation order was issued. The department chief ran in panic and told everyone to quickly condemn him, but consecutively killing seven people and then kidnapping eight people is not a small case. Therefore, wanting to quickly condemn it is basically impossible. The department chief was not only angry but also asked the group members to sentence him as harshly as possible. Let him die as soon as possible. When he arrived at the interrogation room, Sung Jun presented all kinds of evidence to force him to confess. But Eun Jae said that if it weren't for his brother, Sung Jun wouldn't have been able to catch him. The brother you mentioned is the judge Ryu Sun Hoon that you stabbed with the knife. Sung Jun immediately asked why he had to do that, but Eun Jae said he didn't do that. When he learned that Sung Hoon had testified, his eagle eyes immediately couldn't hide his disappointment. Because there is no convincing evidence, he cannot be convicted for the time being. Therefore Sung Jun can only find another way. He immediately remembered that every crime scene had a camera installed. Just see him sending the chief a video of the attack on his daughter. It's enough to prove that he must have left the original video somewhere. Next, Sung Jun immediately let Sukku retrieve the confiscated items from Eun Jae, including a laptop. But when he opened the laptop, he discovered that the hard drive inside was missing. At this time, the chief was secretly walking towards the lake, then carefully took the hard drive out of his pocket and threw it into the lake, and the case was deadlocked again. Sung Jun asked his brother to help him so he went to the interrogation room again. When the goat saw him, his eyes were filled with surprise. 
Sung Hoon also got straight to the point and said that he proactively came here. Hoon Jae immediately stood up and approached Sung Hoon and whispered something, so there's no need I'd act anymore? Then Sung Hoon immediately told Sung Joon, Hoon Jae hid that video in the place he considered the safest. Based on the clues from Sung Joon's brother, he took out the confiscated items. The Bluetooth earphone box inside immediately attracted his attention. He opened it to take a look and discovered a memory card. Next, Sung Joon brought his computer to find the goat and pushed the video in front of him, and it was a video of Mr. Kang's daughter being attacked. Moreover, he also took pictures with the body in black clothes. Hoon Jae froze. He just wanted to know where Sung Joon was taken from. Could it be that his brother really sold him out? Surely it wasn't his brother who told him, my brother could never betray me. Sung Joon said that if you want revenge, you can find the person involved. Why are they so cruel that even their daughter won't forgive them? But who told them to harm Hoon Jae's sister? Therefore, he will also make them feel the pain of losing a loved one. In addition, Hoon Jae also talked about pushing Sung Joon on the playground, and said that he should have killed him in the first place not simply transferring his memories to Sun Jun who has lost his memories. Therefore, this is also the reason why Sun Jun was considered Un Jae. At this time, Sun Jun could not control his anger and stood up, kicking him falling to the ground. Next, he rushed over and punched him in the face. I've had enough of these stupid cops. Think carefully about why that rope is where you are. Sun Jun then went to Sun Hoon and asked him why he knew he was being pushed down to the amusement park and didn't tell him. Furthermore, he pulled out the transmission wire and asked him where it came from. Sung Hoon said that this necklace was something Hoon Jae gave him while at the welfare center. Because she has long considered him her brother. Just wearing this string can prove that they are family. Next, he told Sung Hoon that no matter what happens to him in the future, he must take good care of Hoon Jae. The rope is the symbol of the family. He considered Sung Joon his younger brother, so he later gave the rope to Sung Joon. After listening, Sung Joon was extremely touched. On the day Eun Jae was officially arrested, Sung Hoon came here, but it was his expression that drove Eun Jae crazy. You see this form of me, can you be like that? Sung Hoon still kept his expressionless face with tears in his eyes. You couldn't do that. On the way to be escorted to the Goat Eagle station, he pushed Sung Joon down the stairs. Then the scattered pieces of memory began to be rearranged. This originally belonged to you. Your name is Eun Jae. Before coming to our house, I was at the Hope Welfare Center. It turns out that the person who did all this was always Sung Hoon. At this time, Sung Hoon received a phone call. I knew then the man was pushed down the stairs. In a moment the fragmented memories were finally pieced together. At first, the person who turned him into Eun Jae was Sung Hoon. Sung Joon could not believe that his brother always said he considered him his younger brother. In fact, he always sees himself as a pawn to take revenge. He got angry and pulled the rope down, then went to the detention room to question Eun Jae. What did he mean before when he said his brother would betray him? And why did he restore his memories? But Eun Jae said it out of pity for Sung Joon. Even you don't know why you became like this, but you still stupid and patient. However, Sung Joon paid no attention to it. At the same time, from Sung Joon's small actions, one can see how dissatisfied he is right now. During these days of detention, Eun Jae always doubted him, thinking that his brother had betrayed him. He can't sell me out, he can't do that. To make Eun Jae confess everything, Sung Joon told him, from now on he will have to stay in prison for the rest of his life. But I don't think so. It's not difficult to see from his arrogant appearance that there is definitely someone behind him. So who is the person behind him? Next, Sung Joon immediately asked him the doubt that he had hidden in his heart for a long time. When did you start planning? It seems that Sung Joon knows that the Goat Falcon's accomplice is Sun Hoon. It started from that moment when you turned into me. It turned out that from that moment on, they had already started planning the fall. Although Eun Jae Eagle looked extremely calm on the outside, inside he was extremely uneasy, because he is worried that Sung Hoon will betray him, and how could that little expression of his escape Sung Joon's eyes? Sung Joon immediately added fuel to the fire and told him that, only by blaming all those crimes on someone else could he escape. If that accomplice has a reputation in society and has a good reputation, wanting to blame this crime on someone like him is not a difficult matter. At that time, he himself will have to spend the rest of his life in prison and lose his freedom, the other person can live freely outside. With just that, Sung Joon expressed all his feelings. After returning to the police station, Sung Joon began to rearrange the details of the case. When did he begin to suspect that Sung Hoon was an accomplice? Sung Joon carefully reviewed all the details of the victim's accidents. Suddenly he remembered the night his brother had an accident. If his brother discovered that he doubted him, would he compose his own act? If so, everything seems extremely reasonable. All cases are likely the brother's plan. 
From the moment he decided to hold a trial with nationwide participation, to the murder of the chief's daughter, he was the one who provided information to the jury members. Next was the excited reaction when hearing Manchun record evidence of the conversation with the criminal. There was also the unusual action that initially prevented me investigating driver Choi. And then the random appearance on the day Mr. Kang's daughter was murdered. Now that I think about it, either Sung Hoon was at the scene of the crime or interfered with the investigation. The reason he did so was not to solve the problem but to hinder the investigation. Thinking of this, he immediately called Eun Ki to ask her about the numbers marked by number 45 on the drawing. Was it because Eun Ki told him to do it? After receiving a negative answer, Sung Hoon was even more certain in his heart that his brother was the mastermind behind all the cases. On this side, the woman received a mysterious file. As soon as she opened it, she was immediately so scared that her face turned pale. In the photo is the scene where her husband was in Eun Young's room 20 years ago. It turns out that Eun Young was initially violated not only by the department head but also by her husband. The judge immediately thought that they must have done this. At that time, only he went to the welfare center to collect evidence, but the wife insisted that it could not be Mr. Bay. She arranged assassins to follow Mr. Bay. Mr. Bay looked at the bag in his hand and felt afraid. Next he ran to an unoccupied corner and opened his backpack. Inside is all money, he was extremely satisfied with his calm performance on the trading desk just now. Suddenly a man in black came up behind him. The guy in black picked up a brick, hit him, then killed him. She told her husband that their older son had been acting a bit strange. Moreover, she also said that what Sung Jun said before still bothered her. It is impossible for Sung Jun to have memories of being adopted. Unless Sung Hoon did this on purpose, it's unexpected that Sung Jun's parents have a secret that they can't tell others. After learning that his brother was an accomplice, Sung Jun did not immediately ask him. He told Eun Ki to quickly move out of here because his brother was now very suspicious. He also advised Eun Ki that if she meets Sung Hoon in the future, she must definitely tell him in advance. Early the next morning, as soon as Sung Hoon left the house, Sung Jun also woke up, followed him. The yellow paint on the ground that attracted him, the paint stains on the soles of his shoes and on the soles of Eun Jae's shoes probably both came from here. They definitely come here to see each other often. Now Eun Jae is in the detention room, so who will meet Sung Hoon? He received a phone call from his colleague. What's up Suk Gu? Bae passed away. Sung Jun immediately ran to the scene. This was definitely Young Soo's doing. Eun Jae is now in the detention room, so isn't Young Soo the only one who can attack the jury? His colleague's words immediately made Sung Jun think. Wasn't the person who met his brother in the park Young Soo? So Sung Jun started to inquire and investigate, and also discovered a camera in the restaurant. Where the party was held yesterday, but this was not the restaurant's actions. Through surveillance cameras, he knew that before Mr. Bae came here to meet his mother, his brother had already come to this dining room. So what exactly did you want to hear when you installed that hidden camera? With doubts in his heart, Sung Jun immediately returned to find his parents, but his mother did not say a word about this issue. So Sung Jun called his brother again and said he wanted to see him. However, his brother used the excuse of being busy so he didn't have to see him. So Sung Jun just had to get straight to the point and ask Sung Hoon, Did you kill Bae? At the same time, I asked him why he installed cameras in the restaurant. Was it because he wanted to watch? Do those people make the same decisions as they did 20 years ago? This group of people still followed that same mistake, so Sung Hoon just killed him. Sung Jun asked him if it was his parents and the chief's turn next. So good, are you crazy? Sung Hoon told Sung Jun to absolutely not guess wrong again. After speaking, he hung up the phone. Sung Jun entered the detention room that night, asked Eun Jae, who is their next target? Was his brother forced to participate in the plan? But Eun Jae said that design this revenge plan from beginning to end was Sung Hoon. It turns out the first target was Mr. Beak and the second was the department head. But Eun Jae said the most painful thing for them is probably the pain of losing a loved one. Therefore, Mr. Beak lost the chief's daughter and the department head lost his nephew. Sung Hoon did not agree, thought that he had to pay for the crime he had committed. Eun Jae would disagree and think that they were all masterminds, causing him to lose the sister he loved the most. Then he said he would do this as long as Sung Hoon tacitly agreed. In the end, Sung Hoon immediately gave him a warning and warned him not to touch children. All seven targets were brought to the jury by Sung Hoon. Hoon Jae and Young Soo are also placed in the jury group by Sung Hoon. This way they plan to deal with each one of them. Hoon Jae told Sung Joon until now that the revenge plan is still continuing. Initially, the generous people of the Hope Welfare Center were actually extremely cruel people. Not only did they abuse the child, 
but they also locked her in the villa so they could entertain special guests. Because he had been tormented for a long time, Eun Yun had fallen to the ground and was no longer breathing. Sung Hoon took Eun Jae with him to dig up Eun Yun's body that night. And starting from that moment, the two brothers decided to take revenge. At the same time, he planned extremely carefully. Eun Jae was arrested. Sung Hoon made an appointment with father. He wanted to let Sung Joon know how cruel his father was. And before coming here, he called Sung Joon early. Because the case had passed the prosecution stage, the father opened his mouth without any defense. It turned out that that year he received a case from the welfare center. Before investigating, he discovered that his wife was involved in this case. For the sake of the family's career, the wife ordered all evidence to be destroyed so that everyone could hide this truth. As a husband, he couldn't stand by and watch his wife go to court, so he chose to stay silent. But Sung Hoon knew that the reason his father hid the truth was not just that. You received special hospitality at the villa, right? That's why you did that to hide your crime. It was true that the two people's conversation was clearly heard by Sun Jun in the car. Until now, the father still doesn't see that he was wrong. Sun Hoon just wanted his father to plead guilty, but he had no intention of pleading guilty. Suddenly Sun Jun heard a gunshot. He pointed the gun straight at Sun Hoon and said he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Furthermore, the 20 years he raised him as his own son were enough to pay for his sins. But until now, no matter what he said, he still did not confess. The father once again pulled the trigger. Sung Jun quickly ran to stop him. However, he did not know how to repent. He shouted that he had to kill Sung Hoon here and then vowed to create a crime scene to escape the crime. Sung Jun immediately threw his father down and arrested him for intentional murder. It is very clear that this step is also part of Sung Hoon's revenge plan. He tells Sung Jun all the feelings of betrayal he feels now are the same as what he felt 20 years ago. Sung Jun asked his brother from beginning to end. Has he ever considered himself a younger brother? After receiving a negative answer, Sung Jun's face immediately turned pale. Even Rain couldn't hide his tears. So he immediately punched his brother to the ground and released all the anger in his heart, until he had no more strength. Then Eun Ki went to bring the video from the restaurant to Sung Jun. Sung Jun knew that it was the head of the department who hired the assassin killed Bae. The next day this video was released and immediately caused a stir throughout Korea and also through the call records of Chief, the perpetrator was arrested. Finally, by recording the call of the perpetrator, he arrested the department head. Sung Jun asked his mother to come to the lake. He didn't listen to his mother's gossip anymore and personally put the handcuffs on her. After that incident, Yung Su went to prison to visit Eun Jae and advised him that everything was over, and told him to think for himself. But Eun Jae said it wasn't over yet because he still had one last thing to do. Then he went to the bathroom. Mr. Beak had been waiting here for a long time, between them there is still a debt. Next, Mr. Beak prepared to deal with him to revenge his daughter. He threw Eun Jae into the corner and said he regretted not kill him at first. So my daughter will probably still continue to live. To Mr. Beak, Eun Jae is no different from the original number 13. He stabbed Eun Jae with blow after blow. Then used the same trick to prepare to pry his mouth. Eun Jae grabbed the toothbrush next to him used the last bit of strength to stab it straight into his aorta. In the end, they died on the same place and the resentment between them was erased. After hearing the news of Eun Jae's death, Yoon Soo stopped the game to avoid being punished, but still held the photo taken with Eun Jae in his hand. Sung Hoon, in prison, shed tears. The childhood memories between him and Eun Jae came back to mind. He once promised Eun Young that he would protect Eun Jae well but in the end he still abandoned him. Because the couple was so exhausted, they chose to end their lives and were eventually discovered and taken to the hospital. Eun Ki posted the child abuse incident at the orphanage online, hoping to attract people's attention. Moreover, we also collect self-drawn pictures of abused children and promote them outdoors to receive support from more people. Sung Hoon immediately applied for a nationwide trial. He knew that sooner or later he would have to appear in court. He appealed to the court about the crimes that the welfare center committed that time. Eun Ki's mother also testified in court and said that at that time she discovered Eun Yun lying in the villa. Furthermore, Eun Yun was not the only one who was harmed. And the reason why she didn't dare tell the truth before was because she had also been steamed like that so she was also very scared. When the lawyer asked why these evil people were allowed to serve on the jury, Sung Hoon said that 20 years ago at the Hope Welfare Center, those who abuse and support the abuse of children were all normal people. There are food company employees who visit the food cost box. There are welfare home inspection workers. There are nurses. And there are police officers who protect the country and people after returning to their homes. They all play the role of good husbands and fathers. But it was the devil that brought nightmares to the children of the welfare center that year. After hard efforts, the petition he submitted finally went nowhere. 
which made him extremely desperate. He wanted to choose a nationwide trial not just to reduce the sentence, but to expose the crimes of that year in front of everyone across the country, and finally he also apologized to all the families of the victims. At this moment, Sung Jun also shed tears. He understood that Sung Hoon apology included too much. In the end, members of the jury unanimously agreed that Sung Hoon was guilty. Defendant Sung Hoon was sentenced to life in prison. The resentment brought about 20 years ago has finally ended. The mass murder case that shocked the entire country of Korea has finally come to an end. The last time Sung Jun visited his brother, the two looked at each other speechless. Sung Jun also called up brother before leaving. He hopes that starting now, his brother can escape the suffering of the past. At this time, young Sung Hoon slowly came from the end of the hallway, gradually transforms into the form of an adult Sung Hoon. He pushed open the gate that had blinded him for so many years and walked towards his new life. Okay, this is the end of the movie. Please take 3 seconds to subscribe to the channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you in the next movie. The movie ends here. Thank you for watching. See you in the next movies.